it's all important doctrine, but this part seems to be from human point of view, from my point of view, from our point of view, one of the most important applicable doctrine. Why? Because, you know, you and me are sinners and in need of salvation. That is why. The topic of salvation is one of the most discussed debate studies topics. The most. If anything at all, everyone, whether you are, you've been a Christian for a while or new Christian or not even Christian, the topic of salvation is important in the religion of Christianity. However, the level of interest is different from individual to another. The level of interest depends on the level of intelligence, on an intelligent, intellectual IQ side. You know, people can only discuss about any topic accordingly. This is not to put down or elevate human intelligence, IQ, or education. It's not at all. This is the mere fact that we discuss about any topic at all depend on how intelligent, how well read, how well learned we are. So on the human side, intelligence and awareness and, and education is important to discuss about the topic of interest, salvation, of course. And the other side, it's the vitality, the, the livingness, the life, the life, the livingness, the vitality of individual. What does that mean? It means how much you're alive. It's an all alive, not altogether alive at the same level. Some people are alive, some people really alive. So, from that human point of view, you have to have somewhat of personal interest intelligent ability, logic and reasoning, and IQ to discuss about anything at all. And then the awareness, the livingness, the humanness, the not humanness, the alertness of who you are, you can engage into any topic, including salvation, accordingly. For example, I'm sure you get that already, but it, both sides. For example, if a person alive, but it's not really alive, um, whether drugged out or brain damage or illness or fatigue or loose interest or whatever, and then you engage a com conversation with a person, uh, you see what the result come out, right? So it's a pen on all of that. However, regardless, the intelligent level, the IQ level, I should go with this, an educational level, and the uh, aliveness or vitality level, regardless of all of that, there's another aspect that affect the discussion, the debate, or the study of the topic of salvation. This is the divine side. It has to be from God. It has to be given to us. All of this, you can reach a certain level only. You cannot pass beyond that. The smartest alive or put together, they, um, the smartest and collect all the smart put together cannot pass a level of humanity. That's all. On the contrary, when God touch individual, doesn't matter how high or how low, that person will engage in the topic of salvation differently and effectively, productively. That's what it is. Let me break it down very simple level here. Excuse me one second. And normally people say, bless you. I say, oh, we have priests here. But, uh, kidding. Don't bless me, please. If you want to bless me, please be sure to bless me scripturally and biblically. Don't just bless me, just throw it out. 
No, I'm not about to be blessed or be blessed meaninglessly. Don't like that. I want to be real. And if you want to bless someone, don't wait until they sneeze. Bless them. Either way. All right. That's a footnote. I mean, that's a, footnote. That's a bonus on something else. Go back to the level of reality regarding the topic of salvation. There are six levels in the seen and unseen, tangible and intangible existence of the universe and reality. What does that mean? It means the existence of what exists in this universe, whether physical or spiritual, are in one topic here, in terms of the level of interest, the level of discussion, the level of um, communication and study, and so on, in the topic of salvation. There are six levels. And this, by all means, this is no chisel and stone. By all means, this is nothing like uh, clever or anything. And this is like something that I observe, the simple mind. That's six level. Number one, the level of interest of salvation or ability to communicate, ability to, to appreciate, depend on all of this. And I, when you see that, the level that I list from one to six, one means the lowest, six means the highest. So this is not just random. This is structural, structure purposely for the level of um, important. Sixth level. The first level is a natural element. Natural element make it simple dirt and dust and dead cell laying around. Dirt, dust, dead cell, basically the element of the universe. Whether you talk about the physical element, and air has molecule and atoms and atoms in that, in that, and that still fall into the physical element. I'm talking about that as well. Though you cannot see, but it belongs to this group. The natural elements has the least concern or interest in this topic. And you and I know, obvious, right? They never worry about being saved. Although the Bible says the universe grown for the return of Christ, that we talk about later. But I'm talking about dirt in a sense that accepting Christ, receive salvation. Now we redeem dirt, not a curse of earth anymore, not become a uh, saved earth. Uh, no, we're not talking about that. That's not biblical. So the lowest one is natural element, dirt, dust, and dead cell. Second level above this is plant and vegetation. Those things, trees and plants and greens and so on. And fungus, is fungus belong to the first one or second one? It, let's say second one. Living cell, green, vegetation, do have some level of movement and functions and so on, not that they don't have movement and function and usefulness they do, but this one have a little bit more intricate life into it than just dirt. However, level number two doesn't have much or at all interest or ability to discuss or absorb or appreciate the topic of salvation either. So it's very much the same like the first level. And then there comes the third level. What are they? I'm sure you can imagine now. Well, put it this way. Vegetation, eat off the dirt. Not eat dirt, but fertilizer, water, and so on. And this, uh, 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 food chains right here. Now it's kind of a food chain process here. And something else eat. The vegetation that come from the dirt, right? Could fall into you and me, <laughs> an animal. When do we eat grass? We don't eat grass, we eat gra grass fed, right? Yeah, that's a good one. We eat things that come from the uh, dirt. But then before that, let's go to um, animal. 
animal, bird and beast, creeping things. Third level has a higher complex natures and intelligence and ability than just plants and vegetation. However, still this third level doesn't have much intelligence in terms of the level of discussion, reasoning, understanding, starting this appreciating to the topic of salvation because they don't need that. I know you and I love to see our good dog go to heaven, right? We love our dog and we want our dog to be safe and so on. Maybe they are not just joking. They seem to be almost like human, but they're not human. They seem to have feeling whatever is just like our feeling, a touch of them, and and a little bit more than just trees and so on. However, there are some people who hug trees than they hug their dog. But the point is, animal don't have the ability or interest in the topic of salvation. They don't. And then a fourth level. The fourth level to be discussed. For us, for me personally, I believe there's a fourth level. But some people believe that this fourth level is third level, actually. Dirt, element, dust, dead cell, vegetation, plant, trees, fungus, animal, and then they skip this one, they go to this one. I don't believe that. I believe there's a difference between the animal and this group. Sometimes this group seems to be like animal too, but I still don't believe that. We call it human level. Humanity or human level or man, mankind. Oh man, yeah, you man, animal. <laughs> okay, human level has more complex intelligent ability and has soul, unlike animal. Some people, some doctrine, some philosophy, some group believe that this group is no different than animal. They call it evolution. Or another group is not evolution, but they behave and support those behavior, those actions, as if they believe those people are not people. They say they're just animal. And that's why I said it would be discussed. I don't believe that. I believe people are people, animals are animals. Even though sometimes they act like the same. And sometimes the third one seems to be about the fourth one. Like, man, my animal, my, animal, my dog uh, know how to behave better than this. And you are cheaper than dog. You're like a, you know, when people cuss at each other, they call each other names. That is why. But still, even that may behave like animal, but they're not. God made them in a higher level in his own image. That is why. The fourth level has more, has ability and interest and intelligence to discuss and to appreciate the topic of salvation greater than all the three levels. However, in this fourth level, split in two, two parts, okay? I know I'm getting to outline and point and sub-point, sub-sub-point and so on, so on. Footnote and all of that crazy, but not too crazy. Just follow me, just enjoy the concept. Humanity, there are two groups, A and B. One human group, living, function as human, warm blood, but spiritually dead. The other one, the same as the first one, but spiritually alive. Two different groups in this one level. And the spiritually dead is dead. Just waiting for the body to fall and then the both, both, spirit, both spirit and body gone to hell, to dust, to whatever. And on this side, though the body will die, but the spirit the spirit of this person lived on. Not to say on this side, when they die, the spirit died, gone in annihilation. It's not anything like that. Talking about the direction, heaven or hell. Live, put note here, spiritual spirit, soul of a person will live on either way. 
and we can discuss that more. But it's just a little quick note. The reason is God made them and does things called soul or material, and they cannot be cut, bleed, disintegrate, though morally disintegrate, but in that aspect of a person as a soul cannot get faded away. Again, that's a lot of um, explanation here, but um, good enough. Talk about this group on the, si on the size of the spirit spiritually alive. Okay, human, number four, split into two group, four point A, four point B, four point A, the spiritually dead, four point B, spiritual alive, called Christian or redeemed. And the Christian redeemed now, four point B dot one and four point B dot two. Yep, got it? Yes. The 4.B.1 is of all of us. Redeem, damn, but redeem sinner. Cause save. That's why the topic of salvation has a level of interest to discuss, to study, to learn, to appreciate. That's the 4.B.1. But there's another dot, two, version 2.0, put in that uh, type term. 4.B.2 are the redeemed sinner, all of us, but a different level, just a redeemed sinner. Is that second class citizen of Christianity? No. These people are the same, everything except now spiritual lie, not just saved, but they are useful for the kingdom of God. They're called servants of God. And, and that servant of God break down to many at the level, which I don't want to go there because we're way too deep into something else. Talk about minister, elder, deacons, and everybody, right? Okay, so we can go further and further. But the point is, human can be dead, can be alive spiritually, and human spiritually alive could be just simple, joyful, loving Christian. One, but that group. But that group cannot stay there. Naturally, logically speaking, scripturally speaking, this group eventually go to point number two. I'm not saying split in two that, that, that completely disconnect. No, this one grow to point two. Therefore, I would say four point B, dot one, and dot two are in the same category in, in a progressing manner progressing state. Thank you very much. So it looked like something I said there. Thank you. Very good, very good. Thank you, Alan. Just kidding. <laughs> Not really. Okay, now we have four groups, right? Yeah. They have uh, element, dirt, dust, and dead cell. Some people fall into that, believe it or not. It's like trash. <sighs> Okay, the one, two, plant, vegetation, trees, and, and all those things. This one, not, not too many people liken uh, people to it. But the first one, a lot of people say, you cheaper than dead. And then the third one is animal. Beasts, insects, and creeping things, and crawling, slimy thing, whatever. And that people sometimes liken people to that too. Fourth, human. Human, you break down to a saved and unsaved sinner. Fifth, there's a higher level than human now, for now, it's angels. Not angel, April Tyrese people. <laughs> that one fall into the fourth, four point something, something, but it's been on you. <laughs> no, really. Angelic beings. This order being that God made. Just like he made us. But this is different category, different ability, different strength, different look, different everything. And them and them fall into two subgroups as well. Five point five point A, five point B, the falling angel, the holy angel. The falling angel and the holy angel are the same group originally, and that was given choice to do to take, you know, whether worship God or betray God. Just like uh, we'll go back to four a little bit. The spiritually dead, spiritual alive, the spiritual dead and alive. They both came from the same source, the same start, and given choice to them to 
obey God or betray God and one group and all decide to betray God and one group win with that actually A and B the same but the live one as we study salvation we will see deeper it's not like one group decide to follow God when one group decide to obey disobey or we obey God disobey God it's not anything like that it's all the same and fall into mankindness angel the same thing they bought they came from the same but one decide to go against God with sin and pride and rebellious and all of that. Betrayal. They have a coup. They want to fight. They want to push God out of the throne and they want to climb up to the throne and control the heavenly realm and the physical realm. Follow a leader by the name of Lucifer. And Lucifer, he himself manipulate and also gather and collect those be those group that follow him is not just stupid dumb people just tricked by loose but no they were sinful as well but they both joined force when lucifer got kicked out from heaven he took one out of three angel with him one third of an angel came with lucifer to earth to the realm of demonic and satanic they become demons and those people call, those people, those things call fallen angel. And the difference between five and four, they have no option to repent to come back to God. Absolutely, one time deal is over. And that's go back to the mankind, go back to five, four point A, five point B, and so on. It's just very, very powerful and interesting uh, for us who we are human. You're glad you're human because if you were not, if you just angel, I wish I'm angel, and, and you mess up like this, you you hell bound. But human come back by the grace of God. We will look into that later. And then the holy angel. There came the holy angel. The holy angel are the group of servants of God that commit to serve God and God appoint them to be holy forever. And that's the fifth group of interest. Discuss, learn, appreciate, and understand the topic of salvation. You see that? For us, for us, for us, for us to study this, to, 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 to discuss, to study, to appreciate this, this is not a small thing. This is a privilege. This is a blessing. This is beyond human ability to express why and how we receive this information and study and possess and appreciate this topic. You understand that? That's important. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, and there's another level, which I said sixth level, right? What is above this? But it's divine level divine in the most ultimate, the highest level, is God himself. Obviously, but you know, let me explain. God has the highest, unlimited ability, nature, intelligence, everything, both ability, uh, intelligence, and strength, and nature of holiness and pure, and so on. That is why this topic is the most comprehensible, the most discussed and taught and possessed and actualized and complete by him because he's the only one who can do all of that. Let's say one to five have the ability to interest to understand smart and this and that appreciate. We can only do so far so much. The angel didn't even have that, but they have something else. We above and ascend higher than the angel, but we have some limitation. The, lim uh, the limitation if we're not as smart of angel, right? There, there's this angel, this Tyre, or uh, April, uh, that's human. <laughs> I'm just joking. We should say, this angel, this April, right? <laughs> All right, you got it. Now, there's come the last group, the highest, the ultimate, God himself. Therefore, anything and everything about the topic of salvation, he has it all. One more thing, 
That's greatest already. But one more thing above that is he, the one, not only can understand, can appreciate, can see all. He's the one who actualize, personalize, finalize the topic of salvation to the realization of the benefit to sinful people like you and me. That is the highest level. And we can just flip it. He's number one, angel number two, um, man number three, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, something like that. Okay, good job. Thank you. I don't know why good job. Because good job that we went through this. This is, this is kind of almost like classroom type of outline, so on. And I can't wait to go to, to preaching. Okay, now we go back to the topic of doctrine and salvation. It's very important. Why so important? It is important for every element, one, two, three, four, five, six, all. But right now, for our interest, for our doctrine, our theology, for our worship of God, and for our faith, for our living, for everything, I'm going to pick only two groups, the divine group and the mankind group. Pick the number six and number four out to discuss. Because we, 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 this is close to home. For the divine nature, the nature of God is very important because of his namesake. Salvation is important because it's not so much, oh, salvation is important because we sinner, we Christian uh, need this to go to heaven. That too, but that is secondary to the divine aspect, the correct aspect and the correct, correct reality. The reality is not about humankind, about God and his holy name, his namesake, his reputation, I mean his name, his nature first. Number two, his glory, his, his namesake, his reputation, and his honor. Salvation is important to him because of who he is and who his glory, what his glory is. And thirdly, it's important to him because of his great love. Three points in this. Who he is, God. Therefore, salvation, part of him, because salvation, in, we'll talk about this in the future in detail in scripture. I'm going to show you all that. Salvation belongs to the Lord. That's what Old Testament and New Testament say. And later on, revealed salvation belongs to our Lord Jesus Christ. Early Lord, the Lord Yahweh, Elohim. And now, the salvation belongs to Yahweh, Elohim. And Clarify more to Yahshua, Yahshua, Yahshua Christos, Jesus Christ. So it's important to them, to them, to him, to God, and important to the Father, and important to the Son, and important to the Holy Spirit. Because anything at all, the Holy Spirit is the person joined with the Trinity and work to make it happen actualization to the soul that completely dead a robot at least have something that's not broken and just connect and put oil and put energy and put electricity and go Zzz. and this thing is completely dead even though you plug anything in not gonna wake up because it's dead however the Holy Spirit is powerful who is the person responsible and interest in our, on that topic, the bridge between human deadness to God holiness. I know there's a lot of point here. Thank you very much for typing and correct, correct all of that because that we might need to send out to uh, people, especially my people, they appreciate things like that. They write like smoke. But, <laughs> they cannot get it. It's uh, I, I, I bless their heart. I don't blame them. So that is important to God because of that. His his nature, who he is, his glory, his namesake, his reputation, and his love. His love is absolutely intricate with the salvation of mankind. Now the second group we talk about, right? The sixth one is God, the number four is mankind. Mankind is important to us because of our nature, because the condition of our souls. It's very important. 
And then again, mankind split into two groups, the natural men and the redeemed sinners. They're all in two groups, but split into two groups now. The natural man, spiritually discerned and dead. It's important to us. We all fall into that. That's why. However, it's tricky here because they dead. They cannot discuss. They cannot, they're not even interested in it. How are we going to? Wait a minute. That's why there's a part B of number four, the spiritual alive, the redeemed one, the living one, the spiritual alive one, the saved one. And that saved one go to part two, which is the one that is sinful to the kingdom of God, to God honoring him, and that you know, four point B dot two now dot two dot A honoring God four point four point four B dot two dot B is for the benefit of the spiritually dead which is four point A. I got it? Yeah, thank you. And that is called evangelism. Evangelizing and witnessing and giving the gospel and so on and which tie together to the concept of salvation in which we study which is the fifth oh wait the fifth topic we've been studying the theological doctrine all along the first one the holy scripture the second one the holy god split the holy god the father the the holy father the holy son the holy spirit and then mankind Mankind and sin should be one, but uh, split the two, two, you know, we've been studying that. The, con the concept of the doctrine of sin, and now the doctrine of salvation. Okay, we have enough outline and, and classroom kind of break down. But last point, before I get into this, just intro, sneak preview to the next time. Salvation is always, always, uh, Four point here. By a pure, holy, innocent blood. C, C point one. A, B, C. Where did I get the A? <laughs> the A, the topic, and the B. Never mind. This is my A, B, C. I'm an A, B, C guy. Uh, one, two, three. Password A, B, C, one, two, three. Yeah, I give away my password. Salvation is always one. Innocent blood, holy blood, to always through a person, a person, a person or a living thing. Ultimately, a person, ultimately, the most holiest person, innocent person. Before, an innocent, clean, blameless, uh, uh, blasphemy. <laughs> You know, the, the, the sheep that have no blemish, yeah, blameless blemish, you know what I'm talking about. Animal, but now a person. Two, three, salvation is always by the grace of God. Salvation comes from any Western, Eastern religion, and even in the name of Jesus Christ, the name of the Church of God, with the cross of the Bible, anything of that, and all of a sudden start preaching salvation by what we people should do to earn. That's not the doctrine of salvation according to the Bible. That's not pure Christianity. And there's a footnote in there, and that means that once save, save all, we can do whatever that is. That is not intelligent rhetorical question. At least come for something intelligent, okay? In itself, in its nature, obviously, we're not going to go and do that. The transformation is the result of the salvation. The sanctification is a salvation, uh, sanctification is a process which come after the salvation and the transformation and the sanctification and glorification. We see all of that. So, we talk about simple facts that I can break down to small point and small point I can grind it to the dust. But you know, this is not the time and place to do that. And this footnote is not to say that I'm so brilliant, so smart. No, not at all. Just a matter of one, God give us, me and you, the knowledge, the doctrine, 
of pure doctrine of Christianity and salvation, especially at this point. Two, as a matter, keep a rear on a chair, sit and study, which I don't have too much here. A lot of time, I don't have that discipline, but I'm, I'm, I'm beating myself to submission. Personally, naturally speaking, I cannot sit too long because I something bite me, I have to get up, I have to walk around, unfortunately. However, I'm not excusing myself, I'm just saying this to you so you know, a lot of time, more than half, more than 50%, I got to walk around, do things, especially in the Garden of Eden, yeah, in the Garden, my Garden, or any nature center, where, where there's a nature, a animal, a bird, a insect, a green, has fruit, has flower, not too much flower, is flower become fruit, yes, flower become just flower, you put, stick right here, <laughs> no, I, if I cannot eat those flowers, uh, okay, somebody else can grow that, okay? You can grow that. Oh wait, not, I'm not as uh, personalized anybody, but I grow flowers that later on become fruit. And that fruit is not just fruit ornamental. That fruit become eat edible, eatable, <laughs> eatable too, edible fruit. So anyway, we'll go back here. I enjoy starting that, by the grace of God, of course. And God give us the ability, the grace, to understand, to enter, and to appreciate, to receive, to possess it. And number two, we too have to put in the hour. You have to put in the hour to study. It's not just like oh, magically implant a certain thing by the grace of God, the power of God, the miracle of God, we receive it, yes, but never without studying, be diligent, patient, hardworking to study the Word of God. You have to have both. But anyway, salvation is by always by the innocent blood, always through a person, always by the grace of God. And fourthly, which I, a little bit sneak preview from number three already. Salvation is always result in through faith. I know result in through faith. You just put that together, okay? Grammatically, you know. Salvation always through faith. Without our faith to, uh, to actualize, to verify, not that God needs our faith to actualize. No, it's for our sake to know who we are, our faith. Verify that. That faith alone, we can talk about it later, is given by God as well. So, that's four points in a quick list. Okay, next week, the Wednesday group, the Friday's group, is going to be a quiz on this. All of that. I'm just joking. No. Sunday, not Friday. I give you two more days. Each one have to come up here and give up. When I ask interview question, you pop quiz, you answer, you go. Like communion, right? No, 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 no. No, no, I'm joking. You know that. Okay, now let's come back to the topic of salvation. And you and I know, memorize this, and I, for not again, I always, you know, in the past, my whole life, since the beginning of my Christianity, and I heard people, the wage of sin is death, but the free gift of, of God is the eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh, I tell you, it's just like dropping a speck of dust in the middle of Atlantic Ocean, and Pacific too. Beautiful, brilliant, glorious, but where is it? I heard people say in Rome, 623, this and that, but that word Rome, that word chapter and verse, I have no idea what chapter, what verse, especially I didn't speak English. I have no clue. But I know it's in the Bible, I know it's in the doctrine of Christianity, but never, no, really, actually, I read it and closed it, like gone, the book is so thick, the letter is so small, no picture. And I didn't even read English. So it was so hard, so hard. And I prayed to God, 
God help me. God help me. Since I'm a sinner, since you save me, since I'm dead in my sin, since you help me, since you give me the free gift of salvation, eternal life in Jesus Christ, help me not only to have this faith, help me to read it with my own eyes, help me to know where to find it when I need it. I need it every second during my early stage. Not that I don't need it now, but then I knew that I was living in sin and hell worse than now. My salvation, our salvation is growing daily. Not that one time deal, yes, one time deal to be saved, but it's not a dead thing, continue to grow. A seed of a living tree or plant, one time pop only. And that one time pop, that tap root go down and the stem go up and the leaf pop, pop, pop and then keep on growing and growing, doesn't stay still. But that initial one time, I'm just using illustration, don't say, how about there come along this worm, this snail, this slug, come and eat the tip of and mow it down, and just come a man who has a giant machine, go broom, 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 and the weed back, and go Zzz. What's that mean? No more salvation? <sighs> Illustration have its limit and purpose. <laughs> and get that snail, get that bug, get that lawnmower. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. They have their function. Our faith continue to grow to become a giant big tree. And you just get that. That big tree have life. And how long? No. This is illustration only. Go back. And then I ask God and God. Not long after that, because I was so, so desiring, so wanting, so to see this. To get home, I go completely lost. To my apartment, one lamp only. And then, so dark, cannot find where it is. My soul thirsts. My nature cry out for that, oh God, I'm dying, I'm death, I'm sin, I'm struggle, and this and that. I want to see the assurance that you save me, the free gift from you, eternal in Jesus Christ. Where is it, Lord? Well, not right away, no magic at all, although God can perform miracles, but God allow me to, to go through the life of searching scripture, loving, appreciating, and now get to the level of preaching and sharing. This, the life of a sinner who was in death, in death, in sin. Because the, the wages of his sin is death. But by the free gift of God, pure gift and total free of God, and not in me, but in his son. Jesus Christ, allow me to receive the taste, to enjoy, to appreciate, and to glorify, to, pro to proclaim that gospel. And then he's not no longer just anybody that came to save me as a savior, but he also my Lord since then. And then, of course, as a realization of my um, comfortable with my uh, reading scriptures and so on, where things all start to grow since then. That's me. Anyway, you saw that, Romans 6, 23. The way to sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, my Lord, our Lord. Now, this is a topic of interest that we, at the level of members of all those point, sub point, enjoy interest, ability, and appreciate, and ready to load it, to share, this is who we are. And our text was, or is, <laughs> in First Peter chapter one, was one through 25. And we have a real, last week, I ran, ran through so quickly. This week, I'm going to go a little bit faster, I mean, no, that was fast. A little slower and more detailed, and we go on to the next feature and break down even smaller, clearer, and sh sh uh, slower. But right now, let me highlight something real quick. 
regarding our t the topic of salvation. Obviously, relate to God directly and relate to us directly. The six and the four. The six is God, the four is us. And the four points so on and on. It us, 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 us. Now, now, look at this letter, this epistle. The first epistle Peter wrote to uh, this group of people, which is what we're about to say now. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who are elect exiles of the dispersion, 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 this, yeah, dispersion, in this Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. All this location, you can study geography and history and all that, but the point here is that these people, exile, push out all over the region, because of the political and condition of what's going on around there um, at that time of history, they gone all over the place. Bottom line, they just kicked out, become foreigner refugees. I don't know, legal or illegal alien or not, but that's not hmm, the topic here. <laughs> so how do you view alien? Not alien from the, no, this, uh, the alien, the um, legal alien, the, the, the legal and illegal alien. And now we go to, ah, you can uh, discuss it. No, 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 no. Think about that. Look at this people, not look at the other people. By the way, I was an alien too, but not from the spaceship. I was an alien to this country did not get out from get off from the spaceship i was i really was an alien and really get out from the spaceship called um the 747 back then we called uh, an airline called pan am pan american or whatever you know and then they landed flew across the sky driven and flew by real people not alien and i came out i did look like an alien let me tell you something <laughs> I look back, I was an alien, no different. Very green, literally, not as green as alien green, but I was green, dark, ugly, not that I'm any better now, if anything worse than before, but it's a different type of nature. Came fresh from the jungle, four years in prison, war prisoner in a jungle, starved to death went through a lot of hell on earth, came to this country, dropped off in John Wayne Airport, 11.35 p.m. January the 8th, 1981. Woo! I look at myself in this clear, clean mirror in the bathroom in the um, airport, and I saw beautiful people in and out behind me. I look like a real artifact, alien dead mummy, not the Tom Cruise one. This is a real mummy. That was an alien. Legal or illegal? I was legal. Thank you very much. Not that I look down on illegal alien either, because illegal alien and legal alien and all the, um, the pilgrim, all the, um, the pilgrim, yeah, that came to America, we are all alien. To talk about real um, resident here. You know who the real resident in the land of North America and South America. But anyway, that's political and historical. Go back here, God, the Bible said, this letter, this epistle from the servant of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ wrote to the alien who dispersed all over the place. Some went to, I don't want to, enough of that. You are the exile. However, there's another word. Which one is an adjective, which one a noun? Switch, in Greek, they both could be both. Adjective and noun, they both could be adjective, could be noun, they both could be one word. Elect, exile. You are the elect. You are the chosen one. And because this is the elected like, chosen nation, the race, we talk about Jewish, Christian, or the Jewish, what we're talking about, what we'll describe that later. As the epistle of Peter wrote, we will understand this for Christian. 
whether you're Jew Christian or Gentile Christian or Christian, because they all fall under the same category and condition and, and, and qualification as the elect exile. So it's a good thing that you are the dispersed exile, the refugee, the alien of the world, because this is not your home, folks. Your home's in heaven. This is a temporal tense that we stay. Some of us make it too serious about where we are. And some of us get too serious to the point of cutthroat, killing each other over this, not even our land. People say, it's right, you're not American. I am American. I am American by utilization, by the law of the United States of America, by the flag of US of A. But by the doctrine of God, we are not here. We are not of the citizen, but we are the citizen on earth here to fulfill our duty, but our real citizenship is in heaven. Anyway, my king. So, the elect exile, what's that mean? It means you are nobody to anybody. You are just basically a pest to civilization, to national, uh, to countries, and so on. However, though people look at you as nothing, God look at you as something special. That word alone, beautiful. As much as nobody care for us because we're in the wrong place, in the wrong country, in the wrong time, in the wrong social, wrong economical, wrong intellectual, wrong everything class, God elect us as we are something special people. And that is salvation in one sentence. And also, people say, oh, I don't believe in Calvinism. And so Calvinism or animism or Arminianism, sorry, uh, Arminianism or not. God elect us. God select us. There's no one select and elect God. And that alone, the end of the conversation. And look at this, verse 3 said, Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God, bless him. Why? According to his great mercy. See, that, that alone speaks something. Mercy. Grace and mercy are the same thing in different sides of the coin. Grace gives us something that we don't deserve. Mercy withholds something that we deserve. We deserve punishment in hell. By his mercy, according to his great mercy, that he would, he does not punish us because we deserve that. He has, on the contrary, this is on a grace side, but a, a different sentence, different, different phrase here. Talk about grace, period. He, according to his mercy, and according to his great mercy, and according to his great grace, he has caused us to be born again. That is grace. And that is salvation. That is of God. That is a new nature from the very new beginning. And from the ugly soy compost. Not that compost is bad, people. Compost is good. But that ugly, smelly compost come new birth. Born again. The concept of born again is spiritual birth into the living hope. Now we are not only hope, but living hope. We're gonna describe that later. Through a person, not only a person, through an, a, a, an event and a process of a, of a person who was dead and now alive. Talk about our Lord Jesus Christ, the resurrection of our Jesus Christ from the dead. That whole thing was a atonement on a cross. Die on a behalf, now raised that. A lot of loaded with information, but now talk about, uh, and our point here, talk about the resurrection, talk about the power of God, talk about the hope, talk about our living hope, talk about our born again, talk about our God, our, uh, the, the, the result of what God cost us, talk about our salvation. Whew. I love it. There's a lot to say in a short time. That's why I said I'm going to be not too much in detail because we run out of time. The time. Okay. 
Now this living hope in the Lord Jesus Christ, in a person, in a person, an action and sacrifice of this person, the Lord Jesus Christ did all of that. And now he's alive. Now, now, not only he did all of that, he's back on his throne for us to have a living hope to receive inheritance, to receive something that we did not contribute a thing. On the contrary, we have caused the opposite, the negative. We are on a red, we are on a negative. We didn't help God. We didn't do anything to contribute anything, to earn anything at all. On the contrary, we caused him to die. However, from all of that, not doing anything and cause a lot of headache, a lot of pain and suffering and death from God, God still fixed all of that. And now the result, we receive this hope, this inheritance, not only receive as a gift, but be born into it. Be born, connect, personal. You see that? Become not only receive, but become one. There's so much in my mind I want to draw, I want to describe, but move on. I, I have to hold my tongue. <clears throat> and two, or two, an inheritance that is imperishable. Talk about something beyond human ability and level here. Undefiled, unperishable, undefiled, and unfading. All of this talk about beautiful, strength, um, long-lasting, and it's just forever classic. Not the classic that you throw away, the classic that prices the increase of price, the increase of value, the increase of beauty, and everything. It's not like real estate, right? <laughs> no, real estate went up and down. This one's not. And this one not just real estate on earth. This one kept in heaven. You understand that? This one kept in heaven, kept by a person, gone through by a person, now continue to keep, to be kept in heaven. In heaven, kept, safe, protect, not only protect, but in heaven. Oh, who can go and destroy that? By a person, by him, by God. And not only that, one, two little word for you, in case you miss all of that because it's so many points. For you, personalized, personalized for you, all of you, yes, but each one of you get your own, not package, not gift, but become part of your nature and become your whole nature and you, your nature become it, it become you. And that talk about relationship with the gift and with the person who control all of this, who give you, who birth you, and keep this there for you. And the owner, the sustainer, the master, the Lord, the king, the savior, is very much the gift to you. And you very much a gift to him. And therefore, Christianity salvation is not just a little doctrine that, oh, we say we go to heaven. Oh, yeah, praise the Lord, amen. It's just that too, but a lot more than that. You're the elect one, selected one. Beautiful. For you. And verse 5, who by God's power are being guarded through faith. See, they talk about we, salvation, not just by grace, but also by your faith, through faith. And your faith, again, is being guarded by the power of God, by God himself, in heaven, by his son. Wow. Talk about salvation, it's not a small thing here. Some people, salvation means eternal life, means go to heaven, not perish. That's good. Don't doubt that. John 3, 6. And some people go all the way to all oh, salvation. It's not just salvation, not just direction. I mean, not just um, destination, not uh, eternal. It's the knowing of God. That's good. That's good. You know that verse, right? Salvation is knowing you, the only God, and Jesus Christ, his son. It is good, but deeper than that, what does it mean? The know is like this intimately become family, become one. Not only receive, but the recipient of the gift become that gift. 
that become they become that belonging and nature but share the divine nature in relationship and friendship adoration protection loyalty and all of this become just heavenly that is salvation the question is do you have that if you say i don't have that i have something wrong with you do you want to have that yes i do there's something not too wrong something good I do want that, I did that, but I don't have anything here to skip. But let me tell you something. You, by the grace of God, have caused you to be born, caused you to grow in faith, or that God is working in you, growing toward that, the finalize of your salvation. Might be in place, but you don't realize it. But let me reveal this to you so you realize the blessing in your life, in our life, that though we may not have this much, but if we have this much, take it. Some of us learn slow things. Some of us learn fast. I'm not talking about relationship. I mean, I'm not talking about intelligence and ability at human level and education. I'm talking about the, what we can grow, what our nature and what God grows us every day from birth and now growing is different. You may or may not have all that, but if you do one thing, let me tell you the, how you examine yourself. You do one thing, you do know one thing in your life, two things. If one, compare yourself with yourself before salvation. You see the change? Obviously you do. That's something good. One, two, now that you birth, you change, you become saved, do you see yourself have the desire and see the evidence of growing toward this direction? So yeah, I do have that. I desire that. I, I see that, but it's not much. Oh, you make me feel like I'm so dead sinner and damned to hell. No. No. The intention for us to appreciate and to examine and to, 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 to pursue that, not that you earn salvation or anything, that something that God gifts you, enable you to do that, to be diligent, worship, close relationship and so on and you have that direction you see that nature in you even a little bit praise god you have this too you're in <clears throat> according to the scripture and i'm not trying to make salvation to make uh, this doctrine to make you feel good about yourself no it, uh, clearly it's not however it's logically clearly scripturally it's right here your faith got it by the power of God for salvation. This is salvation. So I thought salvation one time deal. It is one time deal. But that salvation one time deal doesn't stay in one time deal in death. That's not salvation. Contradiction in term. Salvation save, continue to be ongoing, perfect prison tense. Prison perfect tense. Perfect progressive prison. Perfect progress, present tense, yeah. Three things, okay? Not is, yes, not has been, not only that, yes, but has been being. Okay, that's what it is, <laughs> have been being. Okay, I'm just using a little bit of grammar here to highlight something that is ongoing, personal, uh, uh, habitual, and actual, and action going on. Okay, a lot of things. Yeah. I don't know what verb 10 is, but it is present perfect progressive. Yeah, present perfect progressive. Ooh. You are being saved and continue to be saved and growing to be saved until the end. And then your salvation will reveal at the last time, in the last time. Oh, what? The last time my salvation? No, this is the result, the end, a final culmination, culmination of your salvation is a glorification. Glorification is part of your salvation. So all of this protect, guarded and birthed by God, protected by God, through all the way to the end. This is a whole salvation. How do you know? Well, one, God gave it to you already, like I said, divine gift. Two, divine, not divine, this divine gift caused you to be diligent, to be serious, to be a searcher of scripture, a student of scripture, to be the Berean of the scripture. You study, you search, you appreciate, you meditate. 
You learn, you share, you teach, you preach all of that. And all of that, you know, you understand, you can verify, you can, you can check whether salvation was true or not. By reading, knowing the scripture, knowing that you have a relationship with God, the feeling and all that's good. But as reality, do you have that in verification in the Holy Scripture? And that in itself, this is not a different part, uh, point of pocket. This is uh, not a different point. This is a pocket in here. It was sick, especially through various trials. You can tell whether your salvation true or not, through various trials, verse 7, so that the tested, the tested genuine of your faith. See, trial costs, God allows that, is not to bug you. You don't need God to do that for you. You and I can do, bring problem to ourselves enough. So why do you get into problem? Oh, this is my, uh, how did that, after you, Chase back to the last thing. The person caused it. We did cause that problem to ourselves. So it's our problem, okay? But in itself, God let us prove our genuine of faith through trial. Thank God for that because God turned it to be something that assure you, give you the blessing and joy during your earthly journey. You're doing your pilgrim progress here of your faith more precious than gold and pierced through it tested by fire you know all of this everything that come out in your test here come out cleaner than gold those fire illustration in gold just to burn out all the junk and you come up pure gold in that sense may be found to result in praise, let's see, salvation and result in praise and glory and honor to God at the same time. In this praise and honor, God bless us with all this amazing blessing that we far from having anything to do with it, but now we receive and we honor, offer it back to God and praise God and, glor and to glorify God and to honor God and at the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. God allow us to receive all this and offer to him. Something we would not have, something we would not have anything to do. We have the opportunity, the privilege to praise God, to honor God, to, um, one more thing, praise, honor, to glorify God. And this is the result, the ultimate result of salvation. Not so much of, of what, who we are, no, it's for God. But of course, going through that, we get to hold it, we get to offer. Is that the perfect to be in that? And this is another one you may test. Verse eight, though you have not seen him, but you love him. Though you not seen him, you believe in him. Not only believe in him, but you rejoice in, with joys and that is inexpressible and filled with glory. So more than just faith, more than just believe, but the joy. More than just joy, but filled with glory. And that is very hard to swallow. Peter talk a lot about the glory, the honor, so on, for God that give to you and give back to God and to partake the divine nature. And all of this is heavy loaded doctrine, but it's true. And you and I actually experience all of that. We just need to wake up and see that what we have and use it. <clears throat> just like um, having a lot of money in the bank, but we never use it. Have a lot of money buried in a house, and we, a house, but we don't use it. In a property, we don't use it. We let it burn. We let it. You need to get the second loan. I'm <laughs> not just kidding. <laughs> just like having the most powerful weapons, and then somebody come and attack you. You just sit there and like, oh, poor me. You need to pull it. Concerning that salvation, the prophet of old, who prophesied, look into it, acquire search, search carefully. And the same thing for the angel in verse 12, the angel of heaven, look into this long and serious and careful, look into the concept of salvation. If we have time, I'll talk about that later. 
But for us, this concept of salvation is the word of God, the gospel preached to us. We are being preached, proclaim the good news to us. Of course, by human, by preacher, by evangelist, by people, by whatnot. Yes, all of that we understand that God used them, but reality for those who receive the salvation, receive the gospel truly by the Holy Spirit. You see that? It's important to the to, to treat, try in God, to the Father, to the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because the real, realization, the reality is the Holy Spirit, the one who preached to you and put in our heart, and we receive, we believe, we birth from that. After all, what birth from the Spirit is Spirit of Spirit, what birth from human and flesh of this is human and flesh. A lot more. But one more thing before we go, I just two more things actually, but this is the important, most important. People talk about salvation, people talk about saved, go to heaven, people talk about relationship, I mean, uh, knowing God, like head knowledge. This is a lot more than that, this is a relationship. Okay? But no, mind boggling, mind boggling. More than just go to heaven, more than just knowing Him, more than just growing a relationship with Him. This is. No way that we can come up with unless God allows us. No. He wants us all of this relationship to be the purest relationship that we partake his divine nature by the command order of God. We shall be holy as he is holy. Verse 16. As it is written, as it is a command, as it is an order, as it is supposed to be, my word come out from my mouth will not return to me void. I want it to happen to you, my chosen sinner. I'm pour my, my grace, my mercy, my love, my heart, my life, my blood to you so that we have this all this relationship, all this salvation. But most importantly, I want you to be in my life, my heart. You need to be holy because I am holy. Oh, folks, this is salvation. People may not look at it as salvation as something far from you ever imagine. No, 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 no. This is salvation. You cannot know ugliness, dirtiness, and fill, and, 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 and anything dirty can enter the presence of God unless you are holy. And you and I know we holy. Yes, we are holy positionally, title now, and growing daily by the pure sacrificial love, blood that spilled on the cross and the grace of God and the Holy Spirit start to birth us and clean us along the way. And you and I know that we're not anywhere to where we want yet, but we do know that we are on our way direction to God in salvation and transformation, sanctification, purification, and glorification. It's beautiful. And we, on a flip side, I would not want to bring this ugly, dirty, sinful nature, person, whether flesh or spirit, to go to meet the holy God who died for me. I don't want to do that. This is spiteful, thoughtless. I have a lot more work to say, but I don't want to say that. So that's a core, the heartbeat, the center of our, the whole doctrine of salvation. Verse 21, 22, and 3, and 25. We done him. Who through him are believers in God? Okay? Through Jesus, we believe in God. We are through Jesus. We are through God. And God raised him from the dead and gave him the glory so that your faith and hope are in him. You see that? Again, to solidify our salvation, our salvation, our sanctification, our, our transformation, our glorification here. Having purified your souls could be uh, no, God been purify our soul, and whether we try on our own to go along with God, it's still by God. By your now actualized in a human term, your obedience. You know that the difference between us before and us now. 
not only obedient to mom and dad and parents and truth and government and speed limit and so on, but to the truth for a sincere brotherly love. Love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Since we now have been born again, not a perishable seed, but imperishable through the living and abiding word of God. That's why it's so important. That's why I preach my heart out. I drain my soul preaching the word of God. Why? Because this is something, one, God proclaims is important. Two, I personally, if without that, I would have been dead. It's my joy. Remember we talk about redemption, not only, but evangelism. Evangelism. Share with the lost soul like you were before. The abiding word of God powers in that, people. The living and abiding. The living and everlasting. And verse 25, by the word of the Lord remains forever, but the word of the Lord remains forever. Contrast everything else past until we are a lay. <laughs> Cambodian coming up. Everything lay. Everything destroyed and perish, but the word of God remains forever. <laughs> and this word is the gospel, the good news. That was preached to you. This is not highlighting the preacher or anything, but highlighting the being preached to, being proclaimed, being honored, being all of this is the ongoing process. Present, perfect, progressive, ongoing to other from us who was there before. Now we receive, now we grow, now we appreciate, now we're on our way. And at the same time, we are to preach, to share, to teach this good news to others as we receive. This is our gospel. This is our salvation. This is our time's up. <laughs> anyway, I am so sorry to God. I'm sorry to you that I chopped this left and right. It's just so loaded. And that is, this is a short version. It's not as short as last week. This is a little longer, but next week on, we're going to look at it again. And please study. And please study. Now, in a human side, I beg you to study on a divine side from God. You will grow to study, which i seen already. Bless my soul, people. I don't know how else to say this. Footnote, personal footnote. As a preacher, as a servant of God, as a Christian, as a brother, as a friend, as a father. Not the father, you know. Father, padre, oh wait, father, biological father. I am so blessed to see the church of God grow in receiving the word, save, convert, and study, and on their ways, on its way, it means the church to proclaim, preach to others. Can you imagine each one of you bring two friends and each two friends, kind of like the pyramid, right? Each friend bring two friends and each friend that bring two friends bring two friends. Son. Can you imagine each week? Yeah. Praise be to God. On the human side, I want to see this happen. On the divine, uh, on the redeemed human side, either way is good. I praise God. Either way. All right, Pastor Dave. Otherwise, I'll be here until two o'clock. Thank you. Thank you, sir.